all month I've been talking about power, and I've been talking about the, the power that starts from within. We talked about our personal power. We talked about the power with in community. And so this morning, we're going to be talking about the um, power of a world that works for everyone. And to do that, we have for you our assistant, uh, come on up, come on up, our assistant minister, our associate min music minister, and our staff minister to share with you. And I want to say that, Jennifer, your song was like the first talk. So thank you so much, because it really expressed all the things that we've been talking about this month. And so we'll start with our very own Reverend Karen Allen. Thank you. Before I start, I wanted to wish a happy birthday to our dear Han Smith. This is his fir first uh, birthday without us on this plane, and his dear friend um, Gail is here to uh, join us today to help us celebrate. So happy birthday, Hans. We love you. He's with us. Okay. Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed individuals can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. Hmm. We, the Center for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley, a small group of thoughtful, committed individuals committed to the good of all, can change the world. How powerful is that? The power of God moving in through and as each one of us as individuals and collectively is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, whenever I think about the power, that infinite power moving through me, it like wrinkles my brain, man, right? I mean, it's beyond what you can even conceive, beyond what I could conceive. So multiply that by the 50 or 60 people here in this room and that just blows me away. That's power right there. But as a wise man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Do you know who said that? Spider-Man. <laughs> but it's true. You know that, that power must be used wisely. So practitioners of the science of mind philosophy are never allowed to pray for someone if they haven't asked, except for their highest good. And the reason is, we don't know what path everyone is supposed to walk. We don't know what needs to happen in someone's life, or sometimes even our own, for a healing or a revealing of truth to occur. Perhaps someone needs to move through the darkness to see the light. You know, a butterfly needs to go through that struggle of emerging from the cocoon so that the liquid from the body, the fluids from the body can get into the wings so that when they do emerge, the wings are strong enough for flight. We don't know what someone else needs. We don't know what's best for others. So if we don't know what's best for others, how do we create a world that works for everyone? God knows. And because we are one with God, that knowledge has been placed in our hearts of what is ours to do when we align with spirit. When we consciously partner our hearts with God's divine truth, we are empowered to change the world through how we show up in the world, through our consciousness, through authentically being us and being committed to doing the work. Hmm. Each of us is unique. Ours is unique. Our purpose is unique in this world. No one can tell you what's yours to do. The key is to find your way, to find your passion that aligns with God's highest and best truth for all. 
you know, right here in this congregation, Kathy and Tony have committed to creating a world that works for our animals. They have their animal kinship ministry and have created a space for people who come together with the same mindset to change the world. And globally, Mother Teresa, she brought the masses together with common purpose and commitment to change the world. And somewhere, quietly, there's a group of, of monks in a monastery who have chosen to pray for peace because that's what their calling is and that aligns with God's truth. And maybe right here, right now in this room or somewhere, there is someone, there's an individual whose best calling is just to show up one day at a time to be their highest and best selves. How we show up in the world makes a difference. It makes a difference for one simple truth. Because we are one. We are one. I am you. You are me. We are one. Your good is my good. My good is your good. And so I ask you to choose our good. So again, with great power comes great responsibility. Using this power wisely means not assuming we know what's best for others, but finding ours to do, what's ours to do. And what's ours to do must align with the truth for the betterment of all. It must not harm anyone. And if you want to indeed create a world that works for everyone, connect with those who have a similar passion. Commit to it and watch the demonstration unfold. So what is yours to do? This week, I encourage you to go within, to listen, and to align with that passion, that cause, that fills you up, and just commit to doing it. It could look like volunteering for an organization, you know, giving of your time and your talent. It could look like Starting your own movement, maybe a, a podcast. We have somebody in our congregation who started an amazing podcast helping people. It could look like practicing generosity and loving kindness to everyone, especially on the road. It could look like commitment to daily prayer and meditation or even yoga. Or it could simply be showing up to life as best as we can. Each of these acts have the power to create a world that works for everyone because we are everyone. We are one. So please repeat after me. I have the power, have the power. to create a world that works for everyone. So it is. And now, the creative and talented Reverend Arpad Petros. Thank you, Reverend Karen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I was sitting up there, um, my butt was vibrating, and I know that those vibrations are all from the NFL notifications. <laughs> so, uh, I, just, you know, I didn't dare look. So, how do we create a world that works for everyone? Good question. I think we have to listen. Listening is, to me, is one of the key ingredients to creating a world that works for everyone. Because spirit is always talking to us 24-7. And it's talking to millions and billions and trillions of people 24-7. It's just all the time. And you always hear about that soft, quiet voice. But that's not true. It's not always soft. It's not always quiet. Sometimes it's loud, like Reverend Alice with the billboard thing and said, I don't know what it said, but made you turn around. 
sometimes you get it in your media. Sometimes you get it in the day of life. So listening is important because spirit is talking and talking and talking. So here's my story, and I'm sticking with it, about my story of listening. So a couple weeks ago, I was in a rental car, and they didn't have serious radio. So I was just listening to a random radio station, and an Adele song came on, Rolling in the Deep. We could have had it all. And then, of course, because it's not serious, there's a whole slew of commercials that come afterwards. One commercial was from Ralph's. One commercial was the Psychic Network. One commercial was Registration to Vote. And I forget what the fifth, I couldn't, AT&T? No, T-Mobile. I don't remember the last commercial. So this is how it goes. In the Adele song, Rolling in the Deep, we could have had it all. What is she talking about? What is the deep? The deep is the mire, the muck, the garbage in our life that holds on to us, that clings on to us, that pulls us down, that doesn't make us feel very good about ourselves. It's the deep. And the deep is part of life. I hate to tell you, but the deep is the part of life. But what you do with the deep depends on how you live your life. So if we stay there, we become these victims of our own prisons by letting the deep take over. So we don't want to stay there because there's many ways of getting out of there, okay? Then the next commercial was Dare to Compare. And I don't know who this is, the one I don't know who it was from. So do I dare to compare my life as it is now or how I want it to be? Do I take that look and say, oh, this is what I want. This is where I want to be. Jennifer had a long life dream to sing at Disney, right? She finally got the job. It took a few years. <laughs> Took a few years, but she got what she wanted because she always wanted it. It's never too late. Now, the other one was, how can I help? And I think this came from, where did it come from? T-Mobile. How can I help? So it made me, made me realize, oh, how can I help? Well, it's, it's just like God in this big, big uh, dramatic radio station that's broadcasting all the time. It's talking to me all the time, all the time. All the time. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. What do you want? What do you want? Just tell me. I'm always there for you. I'm always there for you. But you got to tell me. What do you want in your life? Then, okay, this is one of my favorite ones from the Psychic Network The Joy of Certainty. The joy of certainty. Now, we're really good religious scientists because we need proof, right? We need proof. We want to know that what we believe in can be manifested. What we believe to be is true. We have to have demonstrations in our lives, otherwise why would you believe it, right? You need to prove it. And if you can't prove it to yourself, you're not going to trust it. If you're not going to trust it, then God, this higher energy power, doesn't exist. It's that simple. And uh, the final two was fun. Keeping it fresh from Ralph's. <laughs> Keeping it fresh from Ralph's. So what I heard was keeping it fresh means practicing our spiritual principles. Practicing our meditation, our tools, our prayers, our uh, classes, everything that we need to do to deal 
with the deep is how we get it done. And finally, there is too much at stake not to vote. So, there, so you know where that came from. But there is too much at stake right now for you not to take your life seriously, to make changes, decide what you want, how you want your life to be, take control of your life, believe in spirit, believe in love, believe in a change, because that's how we're going to change the world. If you change yourself, it's a piece of cake. You're going to change everything else around you, and so does. Oh, 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 wait. The closer is next, Reverend Judy. Thank you. Home run, yeah, oh yeah, <clears throat> a walk off. <sighs> well, as you have heard, our topic is the power to create a world that works for all, for everyone. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a huge responsibility and a big endeavor. It seems like an awful lot for a five foot, hundred and plus pound <coughs> person. <laughs> so let's look at how each of us individually can create that world that works for all. It's just like everything else, it all begins with us, everything, everything begins within ourselves. For we are the ones that make the difference. Who knew? We are the ones with that one thought, with your actions, with one moment at a time, we make a difference in the world. So I have been attending the Monday night at 6.30, Zoom, uh, Zoom or here, money mastery class that Dr. Alice has been offering during our pledge month. So we have four more classes. I invite you to join that at 6.30 Monday night. It's really awesome. It's not just about money. It's about freedom, our freedom for our lives. It's about, it's about consciousness. It's about everything. And it's a wonderful one-hour class, and it'll, it'll lift you up. I absolutely think you should join us on that. You can come here or you can go on Zoom. At our class last Monday, we talked about Emma Curtis Hopkins. And some of you know she was American spiritual teacher and leader. She was born in the 1800s and she died in uh, 1925. And she was uh, really involved in organizing the New Thought Movement. And she was a teacher, a theologian, a writer, a feminist, a mystic, and a healer. She was called the teacher of teachers and the mother of new thought. Several of her students went out and created new works. One of them, Dr. Ernest Holmes, who created this, uh, the Science of Mind textbook and a religious science, and also Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who uh, created the Unity Church that I was raised in. Her famous quote is, there is a good for me, and I ought to have it. And I ought to have it. Sounds kind of weird, the way she says it. There is a good for me, and I ought to have it. Whenever she talked about good, she made that interchangeable with God. So there is a God for me, and I ought to have it. I ought to have it. So to create a world that works for everyone, we must begin with, guess who? Ourselves. We begin with ourselves. Once we are grounded in truth, we can be the light of truth that goes out into the world once we are grounded. So what does that quote mean? There is a good for me, and I ought to have it. I thought it was really funny in the beginning. Oh, well, yeah, I ought to have it. I, you know, what, what does that mean different than I should have it? Yes, it means, 
You ought to have it because guess what? It is your divine inheritance. Since we are all spiritual beings, first and foremost, all the good or God is our divine inheritance. It is our birthright to receive all the good in the universe, every bit of it. So what we can believe, we can receive. We have to believe it first. We must name it to claim it. Both Reverend Karen and Reverend Arpad spoke about the responsibility of naming what you want. I wouldn't go into Cheryl's SC Cafe and walk in there for breakfast and say, you know what, just bring me anything you want. Because I might get something I don't like. So you have to name and make a decision and be clear on what you want for your request. Otherwise, you'll get something that you didn't ask for. Raymond Charles Barker wrote that great book, The Power of Decision, one of my favorites. And over the past 25 years, I think I've taught that class four or five times, and it's always refreshing, it's always new, and it's always a great reminder that we have the power of decision, each one of us. So you take back your personal power when you make a clear decision and you claim your good. So this is a great sentence to help you, uh, remind you of that and help you make your decision. So you fill in the blank. There is a good for me and my good is? Very good. Okay, wholeness. What do you want to claim? These are a few answers that we had in our class I wanted to share with you. I'm not going to put any names with it all, but uh, I'm just going to tell you what we claimed to bring back our personal power. There is a good for me, and my good is knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence. There is a good for me, and there is my optimum health, flexibility, and peace of mind. There is good for me, and my good is financial freedom, unlimited possibilities and transformation. There is good for me, and my good is compassion, kindness, and harmony. And then we all agreed that the first thing we must claim is love and joy. Dr. Ernest Holmes uh, and the Science of Mind says this about love. If we make ourselves receptive to the idea of love, we become lovable. What a concept, right? To the degree that we embody love, we are love. This is why people who love are loved. Love is the greatest healing and drawing power of the, on the earth. It is the very reason of our beingness. And that explains why that it is people should have something or someone to love. No one can swing out into the universe without love, for the whole universe is based upon it. It would seem to be a fundamental fact that love is the basics of all the realities of life. This would in turn give rise to the firm conviction that God is love. God, creative intelligence, depends on its creation. Oh, guess what? That's you. God's creation, that is you. And you are here to be that expression on earth. God could never stop creating or loving. Neither can, it, can, it, neither can its creation, you, stop ceasing to love or expressing God. I believe love is the greatest healing and motivating power in the universe because love is givingness.
What do you want to claim for your good? Have you made a clear decision? It's important. If you are still undecided where you want to go, what your path is, meditate. Get quiet and open your heart, open your mind, and you will get the answers. Just like Reverend Arpad said, it's not very quiet sometimes. Sometimes like something hitting you over the head. The answer is always there. Listen and you shall receive. Thank you.